25 years ago, Crystal started experiencing mysterious pains and intense bouts of fatigue, which she said she just could not explain. And worse yet, no one seemed to believe her, not even her very own husband. I am in pain every day. I've been living with full-blown fibromyalgia for 14 years. It feels like muscles are being actually pulled off the joint. It's a burning sensation right here. The pain's usually around a seven. When I have a migraine, that goes right up to a 10. I wind up in the ER three to four times a year. When Crystal and I first got married, the fibromyalgia was not a problem, but it is definitely a problem. It's not that the symptoms are getting more severe, it's just that I'm wearing down. I work out of town during the week. When I'm on my way home, she's tired, she's done, and she's in bed, and we're thinking, oh no, not again. That really does bring me down and puts me in a bad mood. Ryan comes off unsympathetic sometimes. It's hard not to be resentful. If I didn't have this to face, I would be an unstoppable force. This is frustrating for you, right? It's very frustrating. And also relationally, socially, like with your husband and all. Absolutely. What's your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge now is trying to muster up the strength to even make it through the day. Mm -hmm. um, I know what kind of a mother, what kind of a wife, what kind of an employee I could be, um, but I can't make that, right. I can't make that mark anymore. What's the hardest part about getting people to understand where you are, particularly Ryan? I don't look sick. I don't have a cast on my arm. I don't, you know, I don't have to take insulin. I'm a pretty driven person, and so I can say, I don't feel well today, but then I can still go ahead and try to finish what I'm doing, so he sees that. Well, Crystal's husband, Ryan, is the he we're talking about, he, and he is here in the audience. They've been married for seven years, and he says he still doesn't fully understand Crystal's disease, and sometimes he does wonder if it's real or if it's just <coughs> an excuse. Fair statement? That is correct. Um, she, she goes from high gear to no gear in almost a relatively short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So... Has anybody ever explained to you that the symptoms of fibromyalgia can wax and wane and that there is a pattern among these patients that when they're feeling well, they're almost frenetically trying to get everything done they can yes. before the next valley? I see that. And so they seem like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm having a great day. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, need to, I need to really get, I need to do everything I can while I can. Yes, that is, that is accurate. Yeah, and is that how you feel sometimes? It is. Crystal wonders if there will ever be a cure. I spent many, many years going to all kinds of different doctors. I'd go in and they'd say, let's check your thyroid. At one point I said, you know what, there's nothing wrong with my thyroid. One doctor told me that it was just all in my head. And if I took antidepressants, then I would feel better. I had read some information about fibromyalgia and I took that article to my doctor. It was nice to put a name with it and then truly I could stand up and say, I'm not crazy. It's very disheartening to know that there's no cure. I feel like there is a solution for Crystal. I don't feel like I'm really living. I feel like I'm existing and that's not a good place. Fibromyalgia is a medical condition often referred to as the invisible illness. And I wanted to bring in a medical expert to help explain and offer advice here. So please welcome our good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, <laughs> Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So, Doc, it's good to see you again. Can you help us understand what fibromyalgia really is? And Ryan is right here, so. Crystal, I heard you say that someone told you once that they thought it might be in your head. Mm -hmm. You know, they may be right after all because your brain is in your head. And experts are now saying that fibromyalgia, which is a part of a chronic widespread pain group, um, may actually be due to a processing or sensing problem in the brain and central nervous system. If you look at the symptoms, 
They seem a little hard to get your arms around, but let's run through them. The first one is that it's chronic pain, which means it lasts for at least three months or more. You've got a decade or so, so mm -hmm. uh, there you are. Um, there are also um, challenges with where the pain is, its entire body, above the waist, below the waist, left side and right side. And there's also tenderness to pressure. There are 18 points that are identified as pressure points. I've heard you talk about some and, and point those yeah. out. And as you can see on this chart, of these 18 points, if you have fibromyalgia, to pressure, 11 of those should be sensitive or painful. And then last but not least, fibromyalgia, the pain and the tenderness doesn't stand on its own. There are other things that go along with it. Debilitating fatigue, problems sleeping, mm -hmm. depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. All these things together add up to the diagnosis right. Right. of fibromyalgia. What advice do you have for the family of patients with fibromyalgia? So fibromyalgia is so hard to deal with because it is invisible and because you have these ups and downs, these bursts of energy. Um, there are probably three tips that I would give to families that are dealing with fibromyalgia. In general, the first thing is to realize it's real. Mm -hmm. And you've realized it's real for a very long yes. time. And Ryan, you told us a little bit about your journey and how challenging it is, because it is invisible, to really believe she's not exaggerating or making it up. The second tip is to reset your barometer. And this is very hard because people want to live to their highest aspirations, to their highest points. The last but not least is tap into your network. That's at home, with your immediate family, with your wider family and friends. Crystal wants help on how to manage her daily life as a wife and a mother. And you know, th this is not an easy thing to do because of this vicious cycle that, that you were talking about, right? And what does she need to understand? So you have limitations and, and you know that. So understanding what those limitations are. You also need help. You've done such a great job of trying to protect your husband and your children and your community from this illness that um, you're hurting yourself at the end of the day. So why can't the kids help do some of the things around the house? There are new treatments. There's progress being made, right? Well, there, there are some treatments available. There is no cure. Um, like with many chronic illnesses, um, there is no cure yet. But there are a range of treatments. And there's research that's going on kind of all the time in this area to look for new opportunities to treat the symptoms and uh, lead to less impact on your daily life. Mm -hmm. So you should choose a healthcare team that really understands fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. This is special. And uh, your team should be very well versed in this. The second thing is, there are a lot of things that you can do, um, medications, um, exercise, physical therapy, behavioral therapy, um, stress reduction and relaxation, nutrition. Mm -hmm. So there are all of these things you and your team can um, be reassessing and exploring continuously so that you can find um, which combination works best for you. Last but not least is staying informed and on top of uh, new information that comes out in research. There's information that might be helpful on fibromyalgia and other chronic widespread pain on gethealthystayhealthy.com. So I invite you to try that.